In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe key documents used in a job call system. If we see a discussion question like this or an essay question like this, we can see from it that we're starting off with a job cost system. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So we might be able to pick up some points by just considering what a job cost system is, even if we're not really clear on all the documentation for it. So that's where we would start. It's a, a job cost system is typically going to be one of the two types of uh, cost tracking systems we will have when we're in a production company. So when we're producing things, we could use a job cost system. It typically being used when we're producing things that are somewhat customized, somewhat different in nature. We're not making all the same units of items. It could also be used in a service company when we have uh, types of jobs that we work on that will be different. We're not making inventory, but a service company. We'll typically be focusing in on the production process here. So we'll be thinking about us making things, making things that are somewhat customized, somewhat different in nature, and using a job cost system to allocate the cost to the things we are making. So it's useful if we're thinking about forms, then uh, as to think about the process of how, how the process is gonna work, how the raw material is gonna be converted to the finished goods and then think about the forms that will have be taking place along that process. So there's, there's in essence, there's, there's gonna be three types of costs that we need to think about. And those are gonna be including materials, uh, direct materials, direct labor and overhead. So we can consider as those costs are applied to the inventory, you know, what type of documentation is gonna be there uh, for those costs. So first, we're basically going to start off with the materials. When we get the materials, we can imagine them getting uh, coming into the warehouse, and we're going to then fill out a receiving report saying that we have, uh, you know, received the materials. Uh, we're going to count the materials and make sure that everything is proper once we get the materials. Uh, we're going to record them. We could call that uh, into like a material ledger card, which is basically us tracking the inventory, uh, similar to how we would track inventory if we were just a, a merchandiser, just getting the inventory, counting it, tracking it, we're going to have to track it in a similar way as we would uh, inventory for a merchandising company, meaning we might use a cost flow assumption, first in, first out, last in, first out, average. We're going to have the same kind of, um, kind of issues that we'll have to do when we count the inventory and then assign a cost to it. Now, the only difference is, of course, the, the inventory is not going to be then sold directly to a customer it's just a component it's just raw materials so it will be transferred out of the warehouse but it won't be transferred to the customer it will be transferred from the warehouse to the factory where we start to work on it so if we make guitars we're going to transfer it then from the warehouse to the factory so when a new job happens that's when that happens and how what's the documentation that will drive that in a large company we can have a requisition form so the requisition form is saying hey we have this new job, warehouse people, we need you to, you know, give us some of the wood. If we're, if we're talking about uh, guitars, we're going to say, we need some of that wood that was purchased. Here's a requisition form for how many pieces of wood we need to transfer to the uh, place where we, where we produce, to the assembly plant. <laughs> and so we're going to then transfer that wood, wood with the requisition form. To do that, then the requisition form is going to be used to uh to record the, the the materials leaving on the material ledger card on the inventory side for um, raw materials and it's going to be going to that same form the requisition form is going to be used to put it to a job so we know the journal entry is going to go from materials to work and process and it's going to be supported by a job cost sheet so the job cost sheet is supporting the work and process account 
We can't put in anything to work in process unless we know which job it's going to be on. And so the job sheets are going to be used in order for us to apply that material to specific jobs that we are working on. All those job cost sheets then supporting the work in process account. Once in work in process, then we can imagine the other items that are going to be added here. And that's going to be the direct labor and the overhead. So direct labor uh, is going to be something that we could, people are going to work, of course, and when we record their labor, we're going to record it not as an expense, but to the inventory. In order to track the time, we're going to have to use some type of time sheet. So we're going to have some type of time sheet that's going to be a, possibly a clock in, clock out type of time sheet, which is going to have the, uh, the job that people worked on it, the number of hours and the, and the amount that's going to be applied to each job. And that's going to be the documentation we'll use in order to record again to work in process, increasing the main account by the direct labor. And uh, if there's any indirect labor, we'll also increase the overhead for the indirect labor using that same documentation. We'll also use it to uh, fill out any job accounts to support the work in process account. So the work in process account is going to have the total number. We'll support it by naming which job will be uh, used by having the time tickets that will allow us to have that detailed information. Then we're going to have the overhead and the overhead is going to include things like the materials, the indirect materials, not the direct materials, but indirect materials, which we could use the same type of requisition form, but this time not being able to apply it to the job and then being having to apply it to overhead instead because we can't apply it to the job. Same with the uh, time indirect labor. If we cannot apply it to the job, we'll use the time tickets to apply it to overhead. Then anything else that's on the factory, on production, that we cannot apply to a specific job. Things like paying the utilities, things like paying any other kind of, um, well, we already said the wages, but uh, anything else, depreciation. Those types of things we're going to record to overhead. They'll be uh, driven by the same types of things that would be uh, normally when we pay bills. So if we had a, a bill for the utilities bill, that would drive us. But we wouldn't record utilities expense but instead put it into the overhead, which will eventually go to the uh, work and process account. And then we'll use an allocation method to allocate from the overhead to the specific jobs. We'll, we'll use a predetermined overhead rate in order to do that. We can do that specific on the jobs in order to do that calculation uh, and record the overhead per job based on some kind of cost driver in order to do that so that will happen on the job cost sheet then once the jobs are completed we will uh, show on the jobs they have been closed or they're now completed and that will move them from the work and process account to the finished goods account and then finally of course we'll sell uh, the inventory and that'll be driven by say an invoice which will record the journal entry for the sale typically and that'll be the same for like a merchandising company it recording the sales half, debiting accounts receivable, crediting sales, and the inventory half, crediting uh, inventory, reducing inventory, and debiting the cost of goods sold, writing off the expense at uh, the end of the process, finally recording the expense for all these costs we've been accumulating, we've been capitalizing, we've been putting on the balance sheet instead of the income statement in the form of inventory until this point in time when we actually sold it to help us generate revenue in accordance with the matching principle.